Cognitive therapies help understand the psychological cause behind a distress situation and the reason why irrational thoughts and beliefs are generated into mind. So under cognitive therapy, we would understand three basic therapies. The first is RET, which we call as the rational emotive therapy. The next is the BATS cognitive therapy and finally the CBT or the cognitive behavioral therapy. To begin with, the very first therapy which is the rational emotive therapy, this therapy believes in a simple ABC principle. What is this ABC principle? A means antecedent, B means belief and C means consequence. So uh, antecedent is something that precedes the irrational behavior the belief we can say here is the irrational belief and the consequence is uh, something that is because of the irrational belief now usually when i say must when i say should these are some of the phrases that particularly uh, denote a kind of irrational belief in certain circumstances not always uh, let's say if I say you must attend the class regularly so that must is fine but let's keep it into a different form where I say uh, I should be praised in class every day now if I say I should be praised in class every day this makes it a irrational belief and this is a antecedent an uh, antecedent that would trigger this irrational belief that I am something very special in the class and I should be praised in the class. And finally, the consequence is the requirement for a therapy. And therefore, we call it as the ABC or the antecedent behavioral consequence analysis, which is the rational emotive therapy. So, firstly, there is an irrational belief, a belief that I should be uh, praised by everyone, I should be loved by everyone, I should be respected by everyone, I should be uh, made the most important person of so and so. So this is where a irrational belief comes into play. And usually most of the irrational beliefs are refuted by the therapist and they are through the process of non-directive questions. If the questions are directive, then uh, th that would probably lead to a feeling of inquiry among the mind of the clients. And therefore, the questions should be gentle, the questions should be non-directive in nature and moreover, it should be an assumption about what the life should be, what this problem should be if this comes to a therapist, how the client would handle it. And in this fashion, the RET therapy works and there is a reduction of psychological distress. So the most important form here is the questions which are put by the therapist should be gentle, should be non-directive and directed to changing the philosophy of life for the client, reducing the irrational beliefs and gradually increasing them into a rational, logical viewpoint. The next is Back's Cognitive Therapy. Back's Cognitive Therapy experiences or explains that childhood at some point of time uh, experiences uh, the, that a child has in the younger age group which is either developed by the family or developed by the society, what we can say the core schema around the child creates certain beliefs, certain notions in their life. Now when these beliefs, these notions are created, this could be a reason for the requirement of cognitive therapy later. For example, if a child is neglected in the early stages by the parent. This could be a reason where child in the later stage can think that I am not wanted. If the child is not uh, decent looking, the child can develop a feeling that I am ugly. If 
A child does not perform good in one or two assignments. A child could develop a feeling that I will never succeed. Now all these which I quoted that I am ugly, uh, I'll never succeed, I am not a wanted child. In those cases, there are a cognitive structure. But this cognitive structure is not functional. It's not exactly what it should have been. And therefore, we call these as dysfunctional cognitive structures. So these are a thought structure, definitely. There is a thought that came into our mind. But this thought is not a functional valid thought. And therefore, we call this as a dysfunctional cognitive structure. So the Beck's cognitive therapy focuses on identifying such beliefs, identifying such dysfunctional cognitive structures and creating an opposite viewpoint where the client automatically directs itself, uh, herself or himself to a cause where these negative thoughts or the dysfunctional cognitive structure is slowly converted into a functional cognitive structure and the negative thoughts that are generated into the mental structure are gradually removed. So that is where Bach's cognitive therapy works. Now this therapy is a highly open and a practice therapy. Usually lasts very short. Uh, 10 to 20 sessions are considered fine for this therapy. And even the therapist should be uh, uh, friendly enough because the client needs to share the viewpoints. The next is the cognitive behavior therapy which we also call as the CBT. Now this is a unique therapy as the name suggests it connects the cognitive aspect and the behavioral aspect. Now the understanding and how a person should behave is brought together and therefore the environmental manipulations make the uh, cognitive behavioral therapy a unique therapy because of which it is also known as a biological, psychological and a sociological approach. So it involves your biological makeup, it involves the process of conditioning, it involves the psychological framework where the negative thoughts are to be translated into positive thoughts and the social surroundings, the um, the, uh, the social setup, the family setup, the peer group. So all of those matter in a cognitive behavioral therapy. It is considered very, very effective specifically for diseases like anxiety, depression, panic attacks or in cases of borderline personality disorders. So there is where we usually apply the cognitive behavior therapy. So as we understood under the cognitive therapies, we have three important therapies that we have discussed in this section.